Hello. I have an English friend who is married to an Italian man. Now, whatever your level of interest in football, I'm sure you can appreciate that this would have potentially caused a certain level of tension in their family last weekend. On the morning of the match, she shared a photo of them on Twitter, each with their respective flag face painted on their cheeks, and they were hugging. There was a caption that said, a successful team beats with one heart. Their picture later got put up on the big screen in a fan zone area in Rome. Their unity as a couple, despite supporting opposing teams in arguably England's most important football match in 55 years, captured something special and showed a strength that transcends difference. It was lovely throughout the Euros, throughout the tournament, that there was a sense of unity across the country. Even with those of Scottish heritage, the only team we didn't beat before the final, the banter was generally friendly. After so many months of difficulties, the football was bringing some joy to the country again. After 55 years, there was a sense that we might actually be able to win. That we might even be able to put the agony of penalty shootouts behind us. The nation was united behind the England team. And then after more than 20, 120 minutes and penalties yet again, Italy won the trophy. And sadly, disunity reared its head again all too quickly, with appalling racist comments and violence before the trophy had even been presented. Over the past few years, there seems to have been increasing division in society, in politics, particularly surrounding Brexit, and more recently in our response to the coronavirus pandemic, with views po polarised around personal freedom versus caring for the vulnerable. Even in the church, where you would think unity would be easier, I have witnessed more and more division, more and more polarisation of views. Christians, quite frankly, being rude and offensive to those they disagree with. The church could be so much better at unity. The church should be so much better at unity. Because the thing is, we don't all have to be the same. We don't all have to agree on everything. But we can still be unified. My friend and her husband disagreed on who they hoped would win the football. But they still remained friends. There's a very important difference between unity and uniformity. We can be different. We can have different views. In fact, it's good to have diversity. Look at the world God created. The difference in diversity is key, um, is key not only to its beauty, but also to its existence. How boring would it be if there was only one sort of tree? How, how dull would it be if there were only cats and no duck-billed platypuses? How confusing would it be if we all looked the same? The God we worship is a creative God, the creator God. Difference and diversity are at the very heart of God. The problem is not that we're different and like different things. The problem is how we handle those differences. In our reading this morning from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, he's encouraging them to remember what unites them with each other and with other followers of Jesus. In the early years of the church, there was disagreement between the Jewish Christians and the Gentiles, with the Jews wanting the Gentiles to be more like them, and vice versa, of course. Initially, there was a huge pressure for Gentile converts to follow Jewish tradition and be circumcised and avoid certain foods as a sign of belonging. But in the book of Acts, we're told that God made it very clear to Peter in a vision that this wasn't necessary because all of them had been made clean through Jesus's death. So they were all united as followers of Christ, despite their differences. In his letter, Paul reminds the Gentile Christians in Ephesus that they are now united with all other followers of Christ. That although at one point, they were excluded outsiders. They are now citizens with the saints, that means other Christians, and also members of the household of God. 
Paul says that Jesus made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between them. He encourages them to focus on what they have in common rather than allowing the differences to create disagreement and difference. And what united them was Jesus' blood, Jesus' death for each one of them. Through Jesus, they were united into the same household, into God's family. And just as Christians 2,000 years ago needed reminding of the importance of unity and focusing on what we have in common, the church, we still need reminding of that today, don't we? One of the things I love about the Christian faith and about the Church of England in particular is its diversity. Christians are drawn into God's presence through the most beautiful choral music, through Christian rap music, or through silence. Some feel closest to God while serving in busy city centres as street pastors. Some whilst watching a sunset. Some whilst kneeling in a cathedral built almost a millennium ago. Because we are all different, we all relate to God differently. And isn't that amazing? That's something to be enjoyed and celebrated. It's not something that we should feel threatened by or annoyed by. The longer I've been a Christian, the more I have come to appreciate the different ways people worship. And I've realised that aspects of other worship traditions enrich my worship experience and draw me closer to God as well. But so often I hear comments about the right way to do worship or little jibes about how others relate to God. It's easy to get defensive. It's easy to become arrogant and believe that what works best for us must be the best way, the right way even. But when we do that, we start rebuilding that dividing wall. When we start competing in that way, we create hostility where there should be unity. Jesus knocked down that dividing wall through his death. But for some reason, we seem to love to pick through the rubble and start rebuilding it. And when we do that, we lose so much. We're designed to live together in unity, building one another up, encouraging each other, celebrating each other as members of the household of God. When we focus on and magnify the divisions, we damage what God has reconciled. We damage that holy temple that God is creating to be his spiritual dwelling place. Time and time again in today's passage, Paul tells us that Jesus gives peace. But our division robs us of that peace. We see it in church life and in wider society. And sadly, there are many who seem to enjoy stoking division. As followers of Jesus, we should set the example we can disagree, but we need to disagree well. We need, to know, we need wisdom to know when to challenge. If something is wrong, then we should stand up against it. And not stay quiet just to keep the peace. For example, the racist abuse directed at the three young footballers last week was plain and simply wrong. And it should be called out for what it was. Keeping quiet on matters of injustice quite frankly, allows the wrong to continue. We're called to stand up against such oppression. And when we do, it brings about a unity that goes far deeper than when we try to ignore things or brush things over. But when it's not about justice, but a difference of opinion, our preference over someone else's, then we need the wisdom to listen, to try to understand, to learn, and to appreciate the diversity that we see around us in church life and in the wider world. There is a richness in that diversity that we can all learn to appreciate if we allow God to dismantle the dividing walls. Let's seek to understand each other, to learn from each other, to encourage each other and to grow together into the churches and Christians God calls us to be. As my friend said on her tweet, a successful team beats with one heart. As Christians, we are all united in Christ. 
we most fully reflect God, reflect God's image when our hearts beat in time with God's heart. A successful team beats with one heart. Let our hearts beat in time with God's and see what God does in our church communities. Amen.